Now before we start this problem I just want to run through what actually happens. Remember P starts at the top here, let's just mark that in, from rest. So we'll just say that it starts from rest by putting 0 meters per second in there. P then falls to the ground, comes down to about here say, and when it hits the ground Q, which would have started off down here say, with at rest, would have gone up to about here say, and then as soon as it gets here the string becomes slack and Q carries on into the air and then comes back down again like that and then the string becomes taut. And we've got to find out then the time that it takes for Q to go from here, up here and back down again. So how are we going to do that? Well we could consider this in two stages. First of all we find out what speed that P hits the ground at. It's not zero by the way, a lot of people tend to think that it's going to hit that at a certain speed which I'm going to signify as V with a subscript P on. And that speed that it hits the ground at will be the speed that Q has attained when it just gets to this, this point where the string becomes slack. So I'm going to indicate that by U U subscript Q and that's going to be the same speed as VP. Okay, Not the same velocity, remember velocity is the direction, direction of P is downwards, the direction of Q is upwards, Okay, but they have got the same speed. What happens to Q then? We said that it will go up here and back down again, but at this stage because it's not attached to the string it's slack, it will be under the influence of the acceleration due to gravity which acts downwards. Okay, So just mark that in, the acceleration is g or 9.8 meters per second per second. That acts downwards. So in order to do this problem what I need to do is find out what the initial velocity of q is which is going to be the same uh, or have the same speed, shall I say, as the final speed of P here. So I'm going to consider P first of all in part E. So I'll say consider P. Always tell the reader what you're doing, what particle you're looking at. Okay, so what have we got? We have got to find the final velocity V, which is VP. We know the initial velocity U which is going to be 0 meters per second. And by the way, I haven't put a direction here for taking the positive sense. I think it was pretty obvious here, but we should really say uh, it's going to be downwards, which is going to be positive. The acceleration we know for P is 2.8 meters per second per second, so I'll put that in there. And we also know the time that P took to drop to the ground was, what was it, it was 1.5 wasn't it, 1.5 seconds. So what we could do is use V equals U plus AT and if we substitute in here for V we have VP equals U, well that was zero so I can ignore that, A is 2.8 and t is 1.5. So 2.8 times 1.5 gives an answer of 4.2. So the final velocity of p is 4.2 meters per second. So that means I can update the diagram. Velocity p here we know is 4.2 meters per second downwards there. Same as the speed now, that's passed over to Q here. That will be upwards at 4.2 meters per second. So now that I've got the initial velocity of Q, I can consider the motion of Q. So just jot that down there. 
So if we take upwards for Q as being positive now, we have got that, uh, well let's just actually say that this is our starting point for the next section. So this is the zero level of displacement, if you like. Okay, So as Q goes up and back down again, S would be zero. Remember S is not distance but displacement. So there's been no displacement as it goes up there and comes back down to there. So zero meters for S. We have U is 4.2 meters per second. We have the acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meters per second per second but it acts downwards so that must be negative there minus 9.8 meters per second per second and we want to find t the time it takes for q to go up and back down again so the equation that would link these variables together would be s equals ut plus a half at squared so substituting for these values let's just move this up a little let's say to there what we would have is s is equal to zero and we have u which is 4.2 times t then we have plus half of a well half of minus 9.8 is going to be minus 4.9 t squared Seeing these decimals here, I want to multiply through by 10. So if we do that, we have 0 equals 42t minus 49t squared. And I can see that 7t is a common factor here. So if I pull out 7t as a common factor, we have 6 there minus 7t. So what that therefore means is that, we'll just put it there, therefore 7t must equal 0, or the other factor, 6 minus 7t, that must equal 0. Well, if this were the case, that would lead to t equaling 0. Or if this is the case, I can rearrange this. 6 would equal 7t, so t would equal 6 sevenths of a second. And it's clearly t equals 6 sevenths of a second uh, is going to be the solution that we require because t equals naught is just the initial time when the displacement is zero. But remember, it went up and back down again, and that must correspond to the 6 sevenths. So just sum up and say that the time okay, equals 6 sevenths of a second. And that brings us now to the end of this part, part E, and the end of the question.